This morning. Wow. So, uh, if you're new with us this morning, my name is Alan, the worship leader. If you were with us last week, you'll notice that I was not here, and uh, my family and I were out of town. Just want to thank my friend and former worship pastor MJ for filling in last week. I thought he did a terrific job, and I thought it was a really good service. So, uh, thank you all for making him feel welcome. And uh, just this morning, um, Billy's going to be preaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to f- focus a lot of our worship on the purpose of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know that the Holy Spirit inspired the Word of God. We know that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, of righteousness. We know in Romans 8 it tells us that the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. And that same Holy Spirit dwells within us and gives life to us. And uh, I'm just going to read this. The song that we... Uh, just a moment. This is from Matthew 3, 11. It says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And that is uh, John the Baptist speaking of Jesus. So there's a song that we did three weeks ago, but we didn't teach you to it. So we're going to teach you the song this morning. We're going to do the chorus first. It is called Baptized. It goes like this. We'll do the chorus first. It goes like this. Tell me how deep and wide is the love of Jesus. My soul will testify to the one who saved us. I've been born again. I had to die to find new life in the water and the fire. I've been baptized. 
Okay, so I think you got the basic ideas, but obviously we've got a couple of folks out. We call this Going Unplugged uh, because that's what we always heard it called. If there was no band, no drummer, we said that we're doing it unplugged. So y'all get to be the drums this morning. Uh, so um, we've got a clap leader. Let's try this here. Let's try it guess. Tell me how deep and wide is the love, Jesus. My soul will testify to the one who saves us. I've been born again. I had to die to find new life in the water, in the fire. I've been baptized. That's beautiful. Okay, just keep doing that. That's awesome. I heard an old song What can wash away my sins I went to the water Found a way to start again Filled with fire Now a spirit lives within I heard an old song What can wash away my sins Let's sing it now Tell me how deep and wide Is the love of Jesus My soul will testify To the one who saves us I've been born again I had to die to find new life In the water in the fire I've been are satisfied. A hallelujah. Let your heart be set on fire. Come sing a new song. All who thirst are satisfied. Tell me now. Tell me how deep and wide is the love of Jesus. My soul will
God, let's give him a hand this morning. All right, you may be seated. I think, um, I think Alan picked the wrong Sunday to ask me to clap. It was a little challenging. I appreciate that, though. You know, they, they did, I don't know if you watched the, the service last week, they did quite well with, with MJ on the clapping thing. That's right. So I know so they're capable of it. That's, that's, why, that's why you were trying to get them yeah. going. Absolutely. Well, good morning and welcome to Crossmark Church. I tell you what, I'm, I'm not even going to say a whole lot. I'm just going to ask you uh, to get up and let's greet one another. I think we're just enjoying that time of fellowship and we're going to do that again this morning and then we're going to have a time of prayer here in just a moment. So let's take just a couple of minutes. Don't wander too far, but let's greet one another this morning.
Well, I hate, I hate to break it up, but we've got to move on. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Kelly uh, if he would join me up here, as well as Paul and Kathy Joe. And uh, they're going to be standing off to the side here. And Michelle, I'd invite you up as well. Uh, here's what I want to do this morning. I just want to take a minute. I, I know that not everybody is aware of what goes on in the life of the church, but I do, uh, as pastor, get a lot of information about... Uh, here, Michelle, I'm going to put you on this side uh, so we can even out. Um, but I, but I, I want us to take a moment to pray, and I want to invite you, if you have, and I know some of you do, if you just want to come up and have somebody pray with you, uh, uh, Paul and Kathy Joe, uh, Kelly and Michelle, uh, would be up here to pray with you. And, and this is just me knowing what's going on in some folks' lives. They're dealing with some difficult situations and circumstances. Of course, you, you don't have to come to the front if you're embarrassed. You can find somebody. Uh, Doug's back there in the back. I bet you go pray with Doug if you wanted to. Or Don. Uh, well, I don't know where Don is, but uh, where is Don? There's Don. Listen, listen. Don't y'all know y'all are Baptist and you're supposed to sit in your seats, by gosh? I, I, I see that. I see that. I appreciate that. I really, uh, you know, Zeke and Peggy are out of place, and uh, Lynn, Cheryl, thank y'all for sitting in your seats. We appreciate that. But uh, uh, so, if you don't want to come up to the front, I mean, uh, just just find somebody. Yep. Well, come on. If you want to come up for prayer, you come up for prayer, and just just find find one of these four up here. And uh, we'd invite you to come pray with them. And I'm just going to invite everybody just to, just to go into a spirit of prayer right where you are and just take a few moments to pray. But um, we'll just have some music softly playing here in the background, and I'll close this here in just a moment. those continue to pray and let me encourage you to do so I do want to just share with you a few things this morning and, and ask you to be in prayer for uh, several different situations of course uh, Jacob is back with us this morning and 
want to continue to pray for his family, for his dad, Roy, who, as I told you last week, was uh, diagnosed with uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. And um, uh, Jacob got to be with his dad this past week, and we just pray for your uh, grace and mercy on them for healing, however God decides to heal in that situation. Uh, pray for Scott and Marcy as they are uh, traveling back from uh, their trip to Africa. Of course, you are certainly aware of the news by now that Israel was attacked by Iran uh, overnight. Um, we need to uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray for all civilians who are in harm's way, regardless of, of where they are. But we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we pray that our country would take a right posture when it comes to foreign policy. It has not done so and has invited some of what we see taking place today. Uh, Nancy Mayberry contacted me. Her husband Jack is in the hospital. Please be praying for Jack, uh, dealing with some health issues. Uh, Vicki has asked for prayer. She's come forward this morning. And uh, Dana Jacobs, and I know some of y'all know Dana, she called me yesterday and uh, she found her son uh, had passed overnight. Uh, he lived with her and uh, it, it seemed to be an accidental death. And so please lift her up uh, in prayer as well. Uh, let's go to the Lord together. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Lord, it's hard to describe that when we pray and when we cast our cares upon you and we lift up these petitions, there is certainly a lifting of the burden. And you've told us to cast our cares upon you. You, Lord, you give us that peace that surpasses understanding. Even in the middle of crisis, even in the middle of tribulation and trials, Lord, there's a, a peace and even a joy because of you. And so that's why we come to you this morning. We come to you as a, a church family. We come to you as those who are bearing one another's burdens. We, uh, we want everyone in here to know that they are not alone. First and foremost, you are with them. And we, as their brothers and sisters in Christ, walk beside them. And we share those burdens. Lord, you said to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. And so, God, we lift up Roy to you this morning. We pray for healing. If that is physical healing, we'll praise you. And if that is ultimate healing, we'll praise you. We pray for Scott and Marcy as they travel. We pray for friends in Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for stability in that region of the world. We pray for our country to take a proper posture to help avoid continued escalation of conflicts. And Lord, we know that you will protect your people. And we pray that you would do so. We pray for Jack and his healing and his medical situation. We pray for Vicki and her family and all of the situations that they are currently dealing with. Father, we lift up Dana to you this morning. We just pray for your mercy and your grace. We know that she is hurting in the loss of her son. Lord, it, we, we add all this together and it just seems overwhelming, but you're our God. You're the one true God. You're the God that we can depend upon. You're the God that we look to. You're the God that we know answers prayers. And so, we bring these to you knowing that you will answer. This is why we're here, to seek you and to seek your face and to seek your hand and to ask that you do a mighty work. And we trust you and we believe that you will. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in each and every one of these situations. Now, may we continue to praise and to worship you in this time. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we continue this time of worship. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes. Fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word 
From a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for save you Stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored, and the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of all. Shall not kneel, shall not fade By his blood and in his name In his freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Take a minute, just sing that again, just your voices. God. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Amen. Praise God with morning's breaking light. Praise Him through darkness of the night. Every breath of life. Praise Him with every breath of life. Oh, my soul, praise Him. Praise Him, my soul, with all your might. Praise the Father and praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise the Father, praise the Son. Praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. He's worthy. Praise God when face to face we see. The one who died to set us free. The one who rose in victory. Yes, he did. Jesus, praise now forever, Christ our King. Sing it. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. Praise you, Father, praise you, Son, praise you, Spirit, now with us. Every moment, all our days, God be praised, oh God be praised. God be praised, oh God be praised. God be praised, our God be praised. your voices now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's just 
just take a moment. You know, you know, as we worship, we sing about the holiness of our God. We sing about a God from whom all blessings flow. And uh, it's just as, he, as, we, as we study his word this morning, just pray that he would speak to us. And Hebrews 4.12 reminds us that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So let's just pray that God would speak to us this morning, however, whatever we need to hear. If it's a word of encouragement, if it's a word of wisdom, if it's just uh, you know him stepping on our toes, whatever it is, he always tells us what we need to hear. So let's just pray. Just a moment. Speak, you, Lord. Your people are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. It occurred to me just a moment ago that, you know, so many of us in this room, and I'm, I'm very proud to say this, you know, not everybody... Not everybody here came from a Baptist background. Some of you came from uh, Methodist. You came from more of a charismatic movement. But I am so pleased that so many people find a home here, uh, that uh, we come together and, and we are here to praise the Lord however we praise Him. Uh, if you want to clap, clap. You want to yell, yell. You want to raise your hands, raise your hands. You don't. You want to be the frozen chosen, be the frozen chosen. Uh, now, those, those of you from a Presbyterian background, that's, that's who I'm talking about there. But, uh, but, but however you praise the Lord, just make sure you praise the Lord. Uh, that's, that's why we're here. A uh, week before last, on uh, Wednesday, as I went in for uh, surgery, when they uh, came back to get us and take us to the pre-op room, I noticed that the room they were delivering me to was number 23. And I told the lady that was taking us back there, I said, oh, this is the Michael Jordan room. And, you know, I, I, I of course, grew up, at, in, and many of you uh, will be of age to know who Michael Jordan, well, I think everybody knows who Michael Jordan is. Uh, uh, but some of you got the benefit of, of seeing him uh, play and during the years when, when uh, he was just the best player on the planet, right? Uh, now, somebody will, some people will make the argument that, that, you know, he's arguably the best player. I don't think that's a legitimate argument. I think he is the GOAT. And if you don't know what the GOAT is, the GOAT is the greatest of all time, and I think Michael Jordan is the GOAT. I mean, think about his impact. I mean, it's, it's, it's extraordinary if you think about it. I mean, he, he, the popularity of the sport of basketball significantly increased uh, when Michael Jordan came along. Uh, in fact, everybody wanted to what? They wanted like that Gatorade commercial. Y'all remember that? They wanted to what? Be like Mike. I still love that. I pulled it up this week. I was watching that commercial. Sometimes I dream that he is me. I mean, listen, in my front yard... I was Michael Jordan. The only difference was I couldn't jump that high, I couldn't dunk the ball that well, I couldn't shoot the ball that well. But without all of that, I was Michael Jordan in my front yard. Think about Nike. I mean, Nike wouldn't be what it is today if not for Michael Jordan. I mean, everybody knows the swoosh of the Nike symbol, but and I can't really do it here, but the, you know what I'm talking about? The Michael Jordan... I mean, that, that's as well known as the swoosh of Nike. I mean, think about, uh, I mean, in fact, Michael Jordan was so popular in my household, we had a dog named MJ, <laughs> named after Michael Jordan. I mean, he, he was a, a big deal. But not only on the sport of basketball, not even through endorsements, I was looking at this this week, the economic impact of Michael Jordan. Um, it was Fortune magazine that said in 1998 that uh, Jordan had had a $10 billion impact on the U.S. economy. The Chicago Tribune 
I once did a story that Michael Jordan had meant a trillion dollars to the economy of the city of Chicago alone. This was based on uh, information that they quantified from economists and financial experts. Michael Jordan was certainly gifted, was he not? I mean, think about his height alone. Michael Jordan was six foot six. You know how tall his parents were? His dad was five foot nine and his mom was five foot five. And yet, somehow or another, he was gifted with uh, six foot six. And they're not like, they're occasionally short people will make it to the NBA. Spud Webb, Muggsy Bodes, Bogue, I think was his name. But not very many. But not only was he tall, he had this incredible ability. He was gifted. He, he, he could see things. He could do things. He had this ability. He had drive. I mean, Michael Jordan was, they, they said he practiced as hard as he played. And he had this incredible drive to win, which is why he won uh, six NBA championships. And if not retiring for two years in between, I believe he would have won eight straight NBA championships. But he retired so that Akeem Olajuwon could win two. And he was smart. I mean, Michael Jordan had an incredibly high IQ. Uh, you know, we, we talk about the divisiveness of politics these days, right? Uh, Michael Jordan's mom tried to get him to endorse a Democrat who was running for some office in North Carolina. You know what he told his mom? Republicans buy shoes too. He knew that wasn't a smart move. I think Michael Jordan would have been successful no matter what he did. Whether it was sports or even another sport, I think he would have been a great baseball player had he chosen to play baseball. If he'd chosen to play football, he probably would have been a, a great wide receiver. If he'd just gone into business, he would have been successful or politics perhaps. But Michael Jordan had incredible gifts, and he used those gifts to make an impact. Well, if you in this room today are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you have gifts. God has gifted you. No, you may not be able to shoot a basketball like Michael Jordan. You may not be able to jump like Michael Jordan. But God, at the moment of salvation, endowed you with what we call spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. A spiritual gift is any ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry of the church. I like this definition better. God granted empowerment for ministry on the part of believers. Now, the New Testament has much to say about spiritual gifts. In fact, it's covered in several different places. You find it in Romans chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, which we will look at briefly here today, and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. In all of these places, sometimes it refers to them as gifts or spiritual things or graces or workings or, or manifestations, but, but God has given each and every one of us spiritual gifts. Now, we don't all have the same spiritual gift. We all don't just have one spiritual gift, but we have spiritual gifts. Now, as scholars like to do, they take these uh, passages and they uh, look at all these spiritual gifts and they try to categorize them and, and some of them uh, put them in categories and you'll see this on the screen. Some of them are activities like miracles and healing and faith and some of them manifestations or utterances and uh, some of them are service. You know, some people are, are, are given to giving and caring. And um, some of them are offices of the church. Some of them are, are things that all of us have. Uh, then there are other categorizations. If you go to uh, the next screen, 1 Corinthians 12, it gives you some of the various offices and abilities and, and titles that people might carry. 1 Corinthians 12, down in verses 8 and 10, talk about words of wisdom. Words. Anyway, you, you can go on and on, and, and Brian, you can go ahead and, and scroll through these, and you'll see all of these different gifts. And when you get to 1 Peter chapter 4, it talks about, and it summarizes them in two categories, as those who speak 
and those who serve. Now, you might be inclined to ask the question, well, is this it? Is this all of the gifts? Is this an exhaustive list? Well, I, I don't think it is. I don't think the way that this is given in the Scriptures that we could somehow say that this is all of the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. In fact, I would tell you as a, a pastor on a practical level, that that's not true. Think about some of you and how you've used your gifts, your training, your skills to minister to other, others. I think about Lisa over here, and, and, and I'm sorry, Chuck, to, to bring this up, but Chuck had an accident uh, not too long ago out in the parking lot. Well, my first thought was he needed some medical attention, so I went and found Lisa. And Lisa's a nurse, and so Lisa came in there, and she helped doctor him up. Well, it doesn't say nursing is a spiritual gift, but certainly a, a gift of service to someone in a moment's need is is using the gifts that God has given you. I think about Lynn Sell, who uh, his trade is an architect, and Lynn has done much around the church as far as architecture is concerned, designing this uh, set and this a room that we sit in here today. I think about uh, the people. I told Reuben I'd give him a nod today. So, uh, and, and, and Reuben's not a sound guy by trade, but Reuben has applied himself back there, been back there, learned the soundboard, learned how to work it, learned how to to listen for the right things. Well, it doesn't say soundboard operator as a spiritual gift, but you see how he's using what God has given him as well as Brian and, and the other young men back there. And, 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 and the list goes on and on. And you know what happens when you start naming names. You're going to leave somebody out, so I'm just going to stop there. Uh, but God has gifted each and every one of us to serve him and to serve the body of Christ. Now, throughout these lists, and some, some of these gifts are uh, nouns, which mean they may uh, reference an office, such as uh, the office of teaching or the office of pastor. Some of them are verbs, and they, they describe activity. But here's the thing. Amongst us is a great diversity of gifts. And yet God brings that all together in unity to serve him and to serve one another. It, it, it's really an amazing thing if you think about that God takes each and every one of us. By the way, no one is here by accident. You may think, well, I, I chose to be a part of this church, or uh, I ended up as part of this church, and it's like the Hotel California. They won't let me leave. Um, by, by the way, once you join, it, it, you can check out, but you can never leave. No, I'm just kidding. But, but, but you're here for a reason. You're here for a per God has gifted each and every one of you and brought you to this place at this time to serve him and to serve one another. This great diversity of gifts is brought together in unity for the sake of serving him and serving one another. Now, I know what happens when we get into uh, situations like this. Well, is what that person's doing more important than what that person is doing? Well, the answer is no. Now, Paul does say in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, he says, earnestly desire the higher gifts. Well, what are the higher gifts? Well, typically most people would think that that's a reference to prophecy or proclamation, which is, which is typically what those who preach and teach do. But let me tell you this, and this comes from the words of the pastor. One gift is not greater than another. The fact of the matter is, and Doug's shaking his head back there because he knows this to be true as a pastor, it takes all of us. As the body of Christ... If, if we are absent or absent in, in using our spiritual gifts, that means somebody else has to cover something that you're supposed to be doing, and if they're covering something that you're supposed to be doing, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I'll give you proof of this. Why do we have deacons in the church? Anybody know? Go to Acts chapter 6. It tells us. There was an issue that arose in the early church. Now, uh, I, I can prove to you that that first church in Jerusalem was a Baptist church. You know why? Because they got in a fight early on. That's how we know. But there was an issue 
and that the, the Hellenists, the, the Greek widows, were, were not getting served the way that the Hebrew widows were. And, and they were coming to the apostles and they were saying, listen, you've you got to take care of this. And so what happened is the establishment of the office of deacon. And why did they do that? And it says it very well here in verse 2. It says, the twelve apostles summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. You see, if if they were distracted in doing something that, that they were not necessarily gifted to do, they weren't doing what they were gifted to do, and as a result, the body of Christ suffers for it. So you and I have to find out what our gifts are, and we have to use them in service to the Lord through His church and in service to one another. It takes all of us. Now, all of us, though, have certain things that we should be doing. You can say, well, but I don't have that gift. I can't be doing that. Listen, I'm going to give you three things this morning that all of us need to do regardless of our spiritual gifting. The first one is we need to evangelize. You say, well, wait a minute. We didn't get into it here. But if I look back on that list of, of gifts, one of them is evangelist, right? Now, that's a noun, And yes, the evangelist is a gift to the body of Christ. This is referring to people like Billy Graham, the the greatest evangelist that ever lived who preached the gospel to more people than anybody ever has throughout time. Does that mean that I'm exempt because Billy Graham and other evangelists is it? Does that mean I'm exempt from doing evangelism? No, because we are all called to share our faith with others. So all of us are to do the work of evangelism. Second thing is, all of us, and by the way, I have a wonderful example of someone who did that recently. We've been uh, working on a new ministry area that focuses on our youth, and, and Aniston, who probably doesn't want me to embarrass her, but Aniston recently at her school gave her testimony, and as a result of her testimony, seven students prayed to receive Christ. Now... If she can do it, and Aniston's a little shy, which is probably why she doesn't want me to talk anymore about her. If she can do it, you can do it. But all of us are called to evangelize. All of us are called to disciple. The Great Commission is given to all of us. Go into the world and make disciples. Remember, that's the main verb of that passage is to make disciples. All of us need to be discipling someone, discipling our kids, discipling our spouses, discipling someone in the church. We all need to be discipling someone. And then the last thing is all of us can pray. I can tell you this, you will get to a point in your life, and I'm, I'm getting there, I'm finding physical limitations are coming up. Uh, you know, I'm to the point now in life where, where caution is the only thing I want to exercise. Because when it hurts, it hurts. But the fact of the matter is, is no matter your physical limitations, you can pray. All of us can pray. But we have gifts. And we have gifts that we need to employ in the ministry of God's church. And so let me read uh, this passage to you real quick, and I'm going to get through this quickly. In 1 Peter 4.10, it says this, As each has received a gift, Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each, he says, has been given a gift. He says it also in 1 Corinthians 12, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We all get gifts when we are born again. And he says we are to use them to serve one another. That word serve there can also mean ministering. It it can be anything. It can be making meals for someone. It can be visiting the sick or those who are incarcerated. It may be providing financial support to someone or, or giving them counsel. And when we do that, When we take the gifts that God has given us and we serve one another, we are becoming, it says here, good stewards or managers of what God has given us. 
One commentator put it this way, spiritual gifts are not fundamentally a privilege, but a responsibility, a call to be faithful to what God has bestowed. Some of you will do that through speaking. He gives two general categories here. One of them is speaking. Some of you are teachers. Some of you are Bible study leaders. Some of you are preachers. You can use your gifts, but when you're speaking and when you're preaching, you are doing so by using the Word of God. Listen, we have seen this happen too much in our age. And he says here, you're to do it as one who speaks oracles of God. We've seen too much humanism and secularism find its way into America's pulpits. All we have is the Word of God, and that's it. When we teach, we teach the Word of God. When we preach, we preach the Word of God. When we disciple someone, we disciple them according to the Word of God. This is why Paul tells young Timothy to rightly handle the Word of truth. We have the Word of God. And, and for those who say, okay, speaking, and, and, and by the way, this is still true today. Most people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of dying. And some of you are shaking your head. That's okay because he says here, if you're not a speaker, then you can serve. Now, that doesn't mean those who speak shouldn't serve also. But he says, serve by the strength that God supplies. Listen, we don't do anything on our own. Jesus made this clear in John chapter 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do what? Nothing. We have to depend upon the Lord. But when we do this, when we go with God's word, when we go in God's strength, we do it to the glory of Jesus Christ. And so what we need to do is you need to, we need to discover, develop, and deploy our spiritual gifts in ministry. And I'm going to tell you how we could do that. One thing is, and, 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 and there's nothing necessarily scientific about this. This is just stuff that people have put together over the years. But there are surveys that exist. I'm going to send some of them out via email. I'll have some more available to you uh, printed out next week. Catherine had taken up the printer, so I didn't get them printed this morning. I'll blame it on her. She can't hear me. But, but take those surveys, and it'll kind of help you hone in on what your spiritual gifts are. And, and, and beyond that, I would encourage you, in fact, one of my favorite things as pastors is to meet with people to talk about how God has gifted them, not only with what we can do through these surveys, but, but maybe through your experiences and, and through your vocations and different things you have done in life. How can you use those gifts to serve the body of Christ? And listen, we need you. I believe God is working in this church in a way that I haven't seen in some years. And so it's important that we all are understanding and knowing and using the gifts that God has given us to serve the body of Christ. Going back to basketball real quick as I close. Of course, a lot of basketball going on these days, the women's and the men's championships. And it was interesting that the head coach of the national champion South Carolina Gamecocks, uh, Don Staley, had controversy both before and after the championship game. Before the championship game, she got on the wrong side of some people by saying, I'm of the opinion, or I'm on the opinion of if you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman and you want to play sports or vice versa, you should be able to play. Now, she's talking about transgenderism there. So she offended uh, those who think that's wrong. I happen to be in that camp. After the championship game, she said, God is really funny. He's really funny. The devastating loss that we had last year, by the way, they lost in the Final Four last year. The devastating loss that we had last year, he put us back here with a totally different team. If you don't believe in God, something is wrong with you. Seriously, I'm a believer. I'm a believer because he makes things come true. When you're at your worst, he's at his best. Look at him. That made all the atheists mad. So she made the conservatives mad, and she made the atheists mad. Well, the reality of it is, is certainly Michael Jordan had gifts. The South Carolina women's basketball team had players. Caitlin Clark, who probably most of you have heard of by now, who played for Iowa in the national championship game, she had gifts. The UConn basketball team that won the national championship, they had gifts. But listen, while their gifts 
had an impact on the sports that they played, and in, and in many ways had an economic impact. Your gifts have an eternal impact. Think about that. Everything that Michael Jordan and Caitlin Clark and UConn basketball and South Carolina, everything that they did is temporal. But God has gifted you and God has gifted me to make an eternal difference. Think about that. We won't even know the measure of it here on earth. But in heaven someday we will. Some of y'all remember the 1985 movie Brewster's Millions. Richard Pryor plays Montgomery Brewster. Played minor league baseball, never made more than $11,000 a year, and he finds out that his great uncle, Rupert Horn, had left him a $300 million inheritance. Now he had a choice. He could have $1 million now and forfeit the rest of it. Or if he could spend $30 million in 30 days, he could get all $300 million. But there was a catch. The catch was he could only give 5% of that money to charity and he could only lose 5% of it by gambling. And at the end of that 30 days, after spending $30 million, he could have no assets so he couldn't go out and buy an expensive painting because he would own it, right? And so he took the challenge and, and, and took the $30 million gift to get to the $300 million gift. What is an eternal life worth to someone who doesn't currently have it? Can you put a price on it? So, if you, who've been given a gift, don't use that gift in service to the Lord, you'll never see the full return. Whatever God has given you, whatever He has gifted you, has to be put into the work of the ministry so that that gift can have an eternal impact. Ladies and gentlemen, this is important. So important we're not done talking about it yet, but we're done talking about it today. So as heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Now, to get spiritual gifts, you have to receive the greatest gift of all. The greatest gift of all is Jesus. The greatest gift that you'll ever receive is salvation through repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. He died for you on the cross. He took the punishment for your sins. He rose again so that through faith in Him, you can have the gift of eternal life. What a gift. What a Savior. And when you put your faith and trust in Him, when you receive that gift, you get gifts along with it. Those are spiritual gifts that you can get to use in service to Him. But it starts with Jesus. So if you're here this morning and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. You don't know him as your Lord and Savior. You've not come to that moment of salvation. I would invite you right there in the quietness of your heart. Pray like this and mean it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I come as a sinner. I come repenting of my sins. I turn from them today, and I turn to you. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it from the heart, the Bible says that you were born again. You belong to him now. It's a relationship that will find you in his eternal presence someday. If you have any other decision to make this morning, I would invite you to come. Let God 
lead you in this moment. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the incredible gift of Jesus, the great gift giver. And now let us live our lives in fulfillment of the calling that you have placed upon us with the gifts that you have given us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand for the song of invitation. Purify my heart Let me be as gold And precious silver Purify my heart Let me be as gold Pure gold Refiner's fire my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you. Amen. You be seated and I'll be very brief. As Scott normally does the announcements, he'll be back to do that next week. But uh, just real quick, uh, if you're a guest with us today, thank you for joining us uh, uh, for worship. We uh, are always honored to have guests with us today. Uh, I think I've got the information. If I don't have your information, please make sure I get that today. Uh, we have our garage sale for our youth fundraiser coming up this uh, Saturday. So if you have uh, stuff that you would like to contribute to that, uh, you can uh, bring it up here on Wednesday or you can get with Nate and uh, he'll help make arrangements on, on how to get that. Uh, Scott and Marcy will be <coughs> giving a report on their Zimbabwe mission trip. We'll give them some time next Sunday as well uh, to give us an update, but they're going to give a longer update on April the 24th, uh, which is a Wednesday night up here uh, at the church. Our timeless uh, blessings gathering will be this week. Uh, that's our senior adults. This will be on Thursday uh, at 1 p.m. at Campfire Grill. And uh, are there any other ones up there? Uh, no, I got them all. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, God bless you all. Yes, ma'am. The garage sale starts at 8. Yeah. 8 to 2. 8 to 2. So, yes. And, and certainly... Uh, let others know about it. Uh, if, you, if you know folks that, that like to do the garage selling, uh, by all means, uh, let them know about it. Okay. What's that? All and all help is welcome. That's right. Alan, will you close us out in prayer, please? You bet. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for this great day. Thank you for speaking to us through your word. Lord, thank you for the incredible diversity of gifts that we have here, like, like, uh, like your Billy said. And I uh, just pray you would continue to speak to us and help us to 
not only know how you want to use us, but to be to be willing to step out, to be faithful yeah, with what you've entrusted us and to be good stewards, Lord. Just pray your blessings on these people this week as they go about uh, what you've called them to do, living their lives for your glory. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.